I think like during this whole process, it took me back to my roots a little bit uh, with the more folky stuff, you know, like um, years ago I was in a band, Coda, you know, the accordion orchestra. And I, I started remembering, I took you know, pictures and I thought, oh God, I used to do that and that. And I just started writing more folky and then more storytelling. So it's just been the last year that I've really found my style. So it, it, that's that's definitely happened in the last year, for sure. You know, like after that first lockdown, there was a, a period where you could get together and, and get in the studio. There was like a time. So we're at circa 16 recording. And I had these songs. And I just thought, I want these songs to come together with not much effort. I don't want to put that, you know what I mean? I wanted it just to be fun, especially after that time. So I was like, well, let's just, David Bass has always been there. Fergus Henderson, Jamie McLennan, uh, Mark Irvin on bass came in and, uh, we, and we just put that straight together and it just worked because we've all worked together for years um, and uh, the chemistry between the boys is is great. Obviously their musicianship are great as well. I mean they're infinitely better musicians than me and I know the lyrics so it works, do you know what I mean? Being able to then take that and go with those boys in the studio because those songs that we'd done early on they were recorded live and that was it, they were, they were only recorded I think we rehearsed them three times, um, and then that was it. Like in the studio, and then we'd done it. And I was like, oh, "That's just chemistry." And then the next thing after that, I'd done some garden sessions with the Arch Live people, and then um, we'd done the Big Burn Supper thing with it. And then we're all together playing. It was like this is magic, you know. Um, so that was definitely a high peak. Those little things, actually being able to do the garden gigs, and then the Big Burn Supper doing a man's a man on that with the boys. Uh, and it was just a laugh, and then, and that was another thing watching Fergus on that. Fergus, the drummer, Fergus Henderson, he was, because we had the second lockdown, we had to wear masks. Everybody, so you had a bit of, I never had, because I was singing. Uh, and in the first video, we were okay as long as we we're separated, but in the next lockdown, it was more serious. So through that whole production, everybody had to wear these masks. Fergus, man. You wanted to have seen him. He was really, because it was fast song, he was, he was sweating like mad. He was like, oh, I can't breathe. <laughs> he's mad because he's playing. So there was just like, already there was that sort of chemistry in watching this thing unfold and then being able to perform. So there's been loads of little elements. Um, but yeah, the main one is just being able to take time and actually seeing the whole picture, how it's going to unfold uh, for this year. I, mean, I think if you maybe uh, revert back to say even 10 years ago. I, I think I like to do it like that. You were maybe honing your craft in the pubs and that when that was quite a, you know, remember you, remember you probably yourself, there was always sort of gigging going on in pubs and there was nothing much else to filter through. And now there is a bit more emphasis on DMC and the Arch Live, Big Burn Supper, these things, they are, they are focusing on this thing. The, the career in, in music or in, in art's tough anyway. Everything sort of goes again. We know it from this lockdown and stuff, how anything can affect it. Um, so building an emphasis on it and, and talking about it more and talking about maybe the revenues or the, the career path you can go down, I think it's been really important and that's happening more. Um, and this is, this is a really creative area. And there's people doing great stuff, you know, so it's nice to put these people and, and local artists up there and saying, you know, they're doing this, they're cutting it, you know? So it's nice, nice to put that out there. I've never not gigged in, in any year for the past, since like 12 years old, I've always had a gig. Um, I'm, I, was, I was worried about it because I never felt anything. That's just, it's a really bad to say that, isn't it? Like, I never, literally a couple of weeks ago, I was like, I don't even know how I feel about it, do you know? And then it hit me like a week ago when I knew this was coming on and interviewing with you and I was like, oh, it's becoming real again. And I think it's that, it's, it, it's trying to just go along with the flow, not expecting too high of yourself and just enjoy it again. I'm just excited and I've got a good group of lads uh, to go forward with that with and, and have a good time. And uh, so, no, I'm full of excitement, if not a bit apprehensive <laughs> about not making too many mistakes.